Miss Orendorf here. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a pop-up hot air balloon. This is my hot air balloon and it's sort of like a pop-up card except it's flat. You will need a medium piece of paper and three to four smaller papers to fold and decorate. I use Sharpie to draw my hills and the little basket and the strings and color pencils for the background. If you do not have color pencils, crayons will be just fine. All right, let's get started. We are going to begin by making the body of the hot air balloon first. So you see how big yours turns out and from there move on to the size of the basket and your ground. Okay, you will need three medium pieces of paper, much smaller than your background. You will need to fold all three in half. Make sure that they are all the same size. You will need to make sure, friends, that the folded part is on the left and the open part is on the right. Sort of like a little notebook or a book. With your pencil, you are going to carefully draw. Start here. Hold your paper down while you're drawing and gently draw a curvy line coming to the bottom. You can stop at that little point like I did or you can leave a little bit of space. I would say about a finger. Okay, draw your line. I'm going to make mine much darker so you can see it. And keeping your paper folded with scissors you are going to cut right along that line. When you open it, you see that it is the same size. We call this bilateral symmetry. When you divide right down the middle, it's the same on both sides. Fold it again. Now here's a quick and easy trick to make sure that you get the same exact size of your shape. You are going to feed this folded paper and again, fold it side to the left open side to the right. You are going to feed this folded paper inside of the balloon shape you just cut. Cut right with your scissors right on that edge. And if it makes it easier for you, you can trace on the outside of that shape with pencil and cut it out. Whatever works for you. So now we have two identical shapes. The next part is to have fun decorating a pattern for your hot air balloon. For mine, I just use lines and shapes. I use different colors, Sharpie markers. You can use regular markers or you can use color pencils. I suggest you stay with a color scheme. Um, pick three to four, maybe five colors and stick to those colors so that it's all patterned or uniform. All right, let's see how this turns out. The first one, I'm going to glue it on here flat. I would leave more space on the bottom because you need space for the, about four fingers for the strings and the basket. And then you will need your um, town or ground down here, whatever you are going to choose. Okay, I have here my little tiny hot glue gun. You can use Elmer's glue as well, or uh, tape, if that's all you have. Get creative and problem solve. Okay, so here, I have my tape here to show you. You can just get a little piece of tape, roll a little curl to make it sticky on both sides. If you don't have any kind of glue, you put it on the back and you 
press down. That would be another form of attaching your hot air balloon to the paper. Of course, our number one choice would be glue. Okay, for this next part, you want to fold it, make it crisp, and you are going to use the hot glue gun again or the regular Elmer's glue. If you use regular Elmer's glue, I'm going to line up this line to this line. If you use regular liquid glue, what I suggest is you put the glue along the line like I did, and then to make it stay up at an angle, I would get a little piece of tape, regular tape or masking tape, and kind of put it there like that to provide pressure to keep this up, all right? It's like a little support beam, a little support system in there. Okay, the next one will go right in the middle. And if you want to decorate both sides, that would be even better. And this lesson, I am designing it for um, third, fourth, and fifth graders. But if you are younger and you can find someone to help you attach it with the hot glue gun or the glue, just to give you a little bit of support, go for it. Strings. The Sharpies, kind of. Okay, there we go. And my other string right here. Okay. And the basket, I'm going to draw an oval for the opening of the basket. And you can make a curvy basket or a square basket. It's up to you. I would make the bottom a little bit curvy to give it more shape. Color this in to show the empty space in there. And now you can decorate. I put little flags on mine. Sometimes they even have sandbags um, hanging from the sides. I did do a little pattern with just little lines, something like this. Three lines going this way, three lines going this way. That is the optical illusion of a basket weaving. On the ground, you can decide what you want on the ground. You could have a city or you can have the countryside. In this case, I drew the countryside. And after I was coloring, I was like, hmm, I should have drawn some flowers just to add a little more color. So if you want to do that, you are more than welcome to do so. We are going to brainstorm. What would you see in the sky? I like to make some fun, creative clouds. I put little swirls when I get fancy. And also play with size. The bigger, the closer they are to you, the smaller, the further away they are from you. If you choose to use color pencils on your background like I did, choose two colors, two shades of green, for your ground. One trick that I have found that is very, very cool, this is a technique, is to, instead of coloring, sometimes when kids or grown-ups color a coloring book, uh, they color side to side, side to side. That is okay, it works, but sometimes if your color pencil is um, not sharp enough or you use the wood of the color pencil instead of the um, the lead on the color pencil. Sometimes it's easy to dig little cuts into the paper. And then when you notice, by the time you're done, you notice like little marks on your paper. See this? All right, so a good way to color and create an even surface with your coloring is to color in little swirls. And this is what I mean.
on your ground. For example, you want to color in little spirals, little swirls, little spirals in a circular motion. And you go over and over. And yes, you will have little white spots, but just continue to color. This is a technique that junior high and high school art students use to create a more even surface. Well, now you know you're in the loop. For the shadow part, I'm not going to color the whole thing. I'm gonna show you at the end. For the shadow part, I used the darker shade just here behind, right above the uh, hill in the front to sort of show depth into the picture near the bottom of this because it's behind this overlapping hill. Ta -da! Okay, I would practice that same technique with your sky and your decoration.